The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. When the days were completed for their purification, according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph took Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord and to to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves and two young pigeons, in accordance with the dictate in the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you have let your servant go in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in the sight of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and glory for your people, Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him, and Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted, and you yourself a sword will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped night and day with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. And suddenly there will come into the temple the Lord whom you seek. So imagine this, 2,000 years ago, Joseph and Mary are carrying this new baby, this bundle of joy, into the temple. As they go up the steps into the temple, and I've been blessed to be in the Holy Land and actually go up those same steps, And they bring Jesus, like you're supposed to do, the firstborn, to present to the Lord this bundle of joy. This old man comes up to you and sees the baby and starts talking about all the beautiful things that this baby is going to do. 
And he says this prayer. It's a beautiful prayer. Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all peoples, a light for the revelation to the Gentiles, and glory for your people Israel. This is a turning point. This is the change. The light, which is Christ, has come to the temple. This is such an important moment in the church that every priest or deacons or religious or nuns and monks and many who pray the liturgy of the hours, every night at night prayer, pray this prayer. Master, you may let your servant go in peace. Why? Because we have experienced the Lord in that day. We have seen the light of Christ. 2,000 years ago, Mary and Joseph, I'm sure it says they were amazed. Simeon is giving this prophecy over this child. They've already had the angel that came to Mary. They had the shepherds and the three wise men. And now they have this man in the temple. And then right after him, this woman, Anna, comes again and prophesies over this child. I am sure it's confirming in their hearts this is the Savior. You know, wouldn't you have doubts even if revealed to you by an angel? I'm not sure I got this right, Lord. There would be doubts. But it's revealed to them over and over. And then for us, the light coming into the, te the, the uh, temple. Let's think about that for a minute theologically for you and I. The day we are baptized, we light a candle. It's the light of Christ. And the prayers are, receive the light of Christ. And then we're, we're anointed with sacred chrism on our head. And we become the temple of the Holy Spirit. The light comes into us. And through that light now being in us, we, 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 you and I, individually and as the body of Christ, are responsible now to spread that light to all we meet. Anna, it says about Anna, she says, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the redemption of Jerusalem. She started witnessing. She started evangelizing. She turned into a disciple at 84 years old. If you think your job on earth is done, you're wrong. Because our life witnesses that light to every person we encounter. And as brothers and sisters, co-heirs to the kingdom with Jesus Christ, we also witness the light in other people. We are to look for the light in other people. Whether they're a family member or a co-worker or the lady or guy who's checking you out at the grocery store. Why? Because the light of Christ is now here in this world. The light of Christ is to shine in all of us. And God has given us gifts and talents and abilities that our witness is unique from somebody else's witness. And there are people that only we can witness to because of our walk in life. You know this as well as I do. If you meet someone that has similar things happen to them in their life, if you're divorced and you meet somebody who's divorced, who's living their faith, doesn't that give you hope? If you've lost a child or lost a spouse or lost a parent and you meet someone else who's lost a child or a parent or a spouse, it gives you hope. If you, if you, if you go someplace on vacation and you go down to the front desk and you say, where's the nearest Catholic church? And they go, oh, I'm Catholic. Or somebody in the lobby says, oh, I'm... Doesn't that give you hope? Doesn't that help witness to you and in your 
proclaiming, I need a Catholic church, you're witnessing to everyone that your faith is important, that you know Christ is the Savior. He is the one that brought the light to the world. This is beautiful. It's very significant theologically. And God has gifted us and given us the people around us that we're to witness to. And it doesn't have to be become a Bible thumper and start beating people over the head with the New Testament or the Old Testament. Sometimes it means just making a casserole and taking it to somebody's house who's ill. Sometimes it just means when somebody cuts you off in traffic, you don't come up on their back end and bump them with your car. Or give them the international sign for number one. You know? <laughs> Our witness takes many shapes, many forms. But God has given us not only the ability, but also the task to carry out that witness. That's who we are as Christians. That's who we are as Catholics. And then today, it said in you, if you heard in the prayer, we come here and we experience Christ and He reveals Himself to us in the breaking of the bread. When we come and feed on His body, when we, when we drink His blood, when we experience the intimacy that happens at Holy Eucharist, it even witnesses to us and gives us the strength than to go out and witness. It's a significant day in the church. It's a beautiful day for us to again realize that our faith is important, our witness is necessary, and that it's all gift from God who sent us the light. May our lights shine brightly and bring light to all we encounter.